I've determined that I'm leaking a lot of vapor out of this line. If you look at it, you know, it it, it plugs into there, but look at how look how freaking flimsy it is, man. Like and you know, so I've plugged my, my other lines, all my other openings, I've plugged them all, not completely airtight, but pretty damn tight. Just with things I got around here. And this is the only place that I'm getting a leak at. So use this cool little thing to help me leak search. So I don't have to put bubbles. I don't want to put bubbles and, and risk, you know, getting water and soap down into my tank. So I'm not doing that. So you know when I blow into this, I put some pressure in it. So right now it's under pressure. And this is the only place that it's leaking at. I got this thing for free. Some company, um, what company was it? That company. They sent it to me a couple years ago. They sent me two of them. And they wanted me to do a video on it. And I said I would and I never did. And Well, that's my fault. I should have done one. Because the thing actually works pretty good. The plan that I had was I wanted to use it a little bit first. That way I knew, you know, what it how well it worked before I did it on my channel and um, you know I've used it quite a bit here lately over the last couple years and it works pretty good actually it's not bad it definitely finds um, you know leaks I didn't have nothing really good to plug this this one with but you know when I come over here with it it definitely sniffs the the fuel and you can't use the air compressor on these that's too much it's too much pressure I wish I had, you know, more than one hand because you'll notice. Let's see if I can set you up. All right, that's the best I can set you up. Sorry. So make sure you got some pressure in there. So when I hold it like this, oh man, stupid thing went dead. I gotta wait for it to purge again. So right now my, my tank is under pressure. I've got everywhere else pretty much pretty much taped off, not taped off, sealed. And the problem is when this gets up there under the truck, you know, it doesn't have anything to really keep it straight and in place, and you can't get up there and reach it either. So it could easily end up bam like that. I think it does because there's really no no space under there. Now look, so when this is up and it's straight, it actually doesn't leak. I get more leakage out of these other ones instead of this one. I don't get any leakage out of this. But as soon as like I do this with it, it starts to leak. And you can see, I've got a lot of pressure in there, enough to Enough to definitely find a leak. So, I want to fix this, and I don't want to buy new fuel lines because those are $250, and I don't got $250 I want to spend on that. Okay, so yeah, up in here is where that fuel tank sits. 
And so once it's up there and strapped in place, there's no room to get your hands up there and adjust anything or, or you know, straighten it out. I wish there was. Almost makes me want to reinstall it and uh, and try to try to straighten that out. So what I did was I bought this 5 8 ID line from Amazon. It's 5 8 by 5 feet. And it was only um, it was only fourteen dollars. Okay, I got that, and then I also bought a set of hose clamps. You know, round metal stainless clamps. And that five eighths line fits right over this perfectly, and also fits perfectly over this. So I took a fine tooth, uh, actually a sawzall blade that I had laying around, and I cut it right here. And man, I didn't get a picture of it or any video of it, which was stupid. I really should have. Okay, so up in here, although there's no room to reach it like anywhere else, there is room to get two hands in there if you've got skinny hands, kind of like me. If you got fat hands, you probably ain't gonna be able to do it. But, you know, you can reach up in there and there's enough room to slide a small piece of hose on there with two hose clamps on there and get your nut driver in there to tighten it down. And that's how I resolved my major leak that I had on my gas tank. Now I also, while I was up there, went ahead and uh, eliminated two other potential leaks while I had the 5 8 hose and the hose clamps. On my charcoal canister, there's two that are also the same 5 8 OD that would fit inside my 5 8 ID. So I cut those back and I connected them with hose clamps to my EVAT charcoal canister to eliminate any other possible leaks out of those 5 8 connections. So here's my live data on the scan tool showing the purge solenoid command and the fuel tank pressure sensor as I accelerate the, the pressure in the in the tank goes into a bigger vacuum and then as I let off the gas the pressure the purge solenoid command drops and so does my pressure the pressure goes up so they kind of ride together the two of them and now here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a EVAP purge seal test, where I can command the purge solenoid on 10% of the time with each button push, and then I'll actually pull a vacuum on the system and see how fast my vacuum decays. So when I was doing this before, I had a huge decay. It was, it was going up real fast because of that leak. But now you'll see that my test proves that I have made a pretty good repair. And for the most part, it's got a very minimal leak that I think is probably going to be within spec. And I'll be able to pass the emissions test as far as this aspect goes um, moving forward now. So once it gets close to like 19, I'm going to hit the seal button and then it's going to close the vent valve and the purge solenoid. So here we go, I'm parked, and you can see my decay is really, really slow. This is what you want to see to validate your repair. If you had a much bigger decay, dropping like 0 0.20 to 
0.50 per frame or per second or even more this is a, a great a beautiful thing to see so there you go hopefully this uh, helps you some if you're struggling with an evap leak because they're a real pain in the ass you can fix them simply with some hose and some hose clamps so have a great day